clothes, you're going to think that everything's going to be right there. It's going to be beautiful. She's going to be glowing and shining. She's going to take off her clothes and she's going to look like a regular woman down there. You're going to be like, oh. Yeah, well, there, there they are. There's the <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> oh. Or she going to say something crazy. Hold on. Let me make sure. Make sure my daughter ain't in ears right here. Shot. She be trying to sneak up on my podcast. She gonna say something to me. Oh wow, great. Uh, why don't you bust on my face or something like that? You'll be like, what? You want me to do what? Because what you wanted her to do is you wanted to caress her hair. You wanted to hold her tight. You wanted to not let the you wanted to let the experience ride out. And she gonna come on there and gargle. I'll gargle it and do something out there, spit it back on you, slurp it up. And you sitting there like. I'm telling you, man, it's in your head. And this is why you have rage. The best way to overcome that is literally find. Yeah, she wants to be disrespectful. The, find them, pay the fee. You'll get over it. And, and you'll literally go. This is what you'll do. You'll start questioning life. You'll start questioning life. You was like, I've chased women like that for 20 years. <laughs> You were like, I've chased women like that for 20 years, trying to get me one. I just got one, and it was like. <sighs> or her makeup smeared off, or she had a boogie or something like that. You're literally like. I'm telling you, when it comes to attractive women, it's all a facade. It's not an indicator of how they're going to perform for you. It's not an indicator. It's nice, I guess. But they're better from far away than they are actually when you get them. All right. You're going to feel realize you put too much emphasis in, on this and you're really going to go, wow. I wasted years of my life. So the reason why you're enraged is because you haven't decided that that's an option for you you've been fooled they'll call you a trick oh i ain't tricking for it i do and then you're you'll really get stupid and delusional i won't pay for dates for woman no matter what all right i refuse no matter what okay this is the best woman you can get right here you ain't gonna pay for nothing okay hell no no i ain't paying for nothing i ain't tricking nothing i ain't paying her you're gonna be stuck in rage forever because when you go out there in the real world you're going to be chasing something. You're going to be chasing a ghost. You're going to be chasing a ghost. Going out there thinking you're going to find eights and nines and tens on a regular basis. And you're just you. You're not the top guy out here. You're just you. You're going to be frustrated. You're chasing a ghost. And you're going to constantly have them slipping out of your hands. Oh, I was close. Oh, I almost had it. You're going to spend so much money. You could have just literally bought one. Lease one out. You ever do that? You go to a store somewhere, you lease out a bike, you ride that sh till the wheels fall off, you turn it back in. Here you go. Give me my damn driver's license and my deposit back. That's exactly what it's way cheaper to do it. And you got what you wanted. You got confirmation or you got the fact, okay, this is exactly what I expected it to be. I want more of that. How do I get more of that? I want it as easy. I don't want to chase after it. It's difficult. He says, but what about personality, coach? It's a facade. Personality? Let me just say this. You guys have met some of the ugliest personalities you've ever experienced in your life off of dating apps, approaching game, etc., etc., etc. You name it. Some of the worst, some of the worst way women have treated you. Marriage, relationships, approach game, dating. Tinder dating. Am I not lying? What the hell? How how much worse can it get? <laughs> and I see handsome men getting turned down and woman looking at them up and down like this. And I'm like, this dude, he got it all. He a Chad and women dissing him. I'm like, oh. The game is all effed up. But you guys will literally go out there and all day trying to win women over with personality and words mm. i packed that in a long time ago bro 
I packed that in a long time. And what a tremendous waste of time. Tremendous waste of time. I don't even know how even... I keep saying it and people keep arriving at their own conclusion. Tremendous waste of time, resources, energy. It is uh, one of those things where eventually what you'll do is you'll aim low. You'll end up going, okay, I won't talk to the attractive women anymore. And then you're getting shot down by sixes and fives and fours. I don't know how much you're, you like your self-esteem, but your self-esteem is going to implode when you keep going out to these settings and getting turned down by even because you're too scared to talk to the attractive women. I would rather you talk to all attractive women, but then you're getting shot down by sixes. Mm. Man, pack that ish in. <laughs> Go over here. Talk to Heidi Fleiss and call it a day. Anyway. Yeah, you're getting shot down by baby mamas. You know, women, obviously, that you think you're doing them. A I'll do her a favor and talk to her. And then she shoots your ass down. You like. Mm. All right, what am I doing wrong? You call up your dating coach. Hey, what am I doing wrong, son? I don't waste zero time with that. Oh, my dog is in the building, man. Hey, shout out to Minister Jap in the building. He says, salute, big dog. It's love from the church. And everybody's trying to create beef against me and Jap. We, there ain't no beef, all right? You know, I'm not against Minister Jap. We we two brothers. We hung out in Vegas with two brothers. We got a difference of opinion on a subject matter, but we agree on the rest of it. Shout out to Jap in the building. Church in the building somebody said isn't that illegal <laughs> what's illegal what is illegal i'm not telling you to do anything <laughs> illegal here there's ways to do this what is my son talking about here he want to text me now in the middle of my show Uh, let's see here. Brisk Clown says, oh, no, DGC. <laughs> All right, ask the politicians. They the ones doing it. Your politicians are doing it. Your politicians are doing it. Your celebrities are doing it. Your athletes are doing it. <laughs> I know you just, you always messing with me. And here's one, oh, I, I would say the one more thing you know, man. They, like, I don't know, when you find out this is what's going to happen if you improve your financial situation. This is another thing that will let make it really messed up for you. I don't I don't know, man. When your financial situation improves and you actually have leverage, you will look at women completely different. Ladies, are you listening to me? Cuz listen, this is an important story for men and women. Men and women, you guys got to hear this because women will do this. Hey, uh, I don't I don't date Dusty's. Well, Dusty's is your territory that you're no better than Dusty's. So you better start picking from Dusty's, right? Because you're trying to date dudes with money and you don't qualify at all. You barely qualify for practice with them. If you do qualify, you're either a bed wench, concubine, hair. I mean, you're literally going to get busted on your eyelashes i mean that's probably the extent of it that's where it's gonna go so ladies this is important men this is important once you get money or you get above a certain financial position you literally will look at the women below you okay and you're gonna go i wouldn't touch her with a 10-foot pole mm. Because it won't be worth it for you. Number one, it won't be worth it for you. Number two, the people you move with, they will look at you cockeyed if you showed up with that girl in a social setting. This is the whole arranged marriage, right? This is the whole arrange. This is why arrangements, arranged marriage, we're kind of moving back towards arrangements and arranged marriage. So the women walking around here, no, I need a man that's making six figures. If I brought you around my people, 
they will look at me like, what the hell? Yeah, they will look at me Martin Lutherly. Oh, no. They will look at me Martin Lutherly like this if I brought you around. You would not throw your salami on the thing. You would be like, people would be like, what are you doing with her, man? Oh, man, you know, I, you got, I like them or I like them thick. I like them soggy. Because you're not rolling. See, when you're, when you're broke, you're rolling with broke people. When you're a little bit more not broke, you start not rolling with broke people. So that woman passed as decent enough when you was broke. But now you over here. Now you in a middle class neighborhood. I don't know if you know about middle class neighborhoods and cul-de-sacs. Everybody sees what you're doing. There's no secrets. Everybody sees what you're doing. So you can't hide. So they see these straggle daggles running in, these soggy big mastodons. They all waddling into your house. They like. Your neighbor said, yo, I heard you was a player, huh? You said you was the Mac, but all I see, they looking at you like this. All I see is soggy women running up and down. <laughs> And they're like, man, I thought you said you had game. I thought you said you were getting girls. But all the girls I see you running up in, you running up in here, these troglodytes. What's going on with that, bro? And don't get good money. I'm talking about, did you start moving into uh, upper middle class and getting invited to stuff? Hey, uh, we're going to invite you to this fundraiser. We're having a silent auction. Why don't you come? We'll leave uh, a plus one. He said, uh, we'll leave with you. We'll leave you in a plus one. You know who they want to see? They want to see you bring in some old nasty old iron and back Kaylee coming up in there. They want to see you bring up somebody up in there in some shape. Okay. But then you running up in there, you run around up in there. You bring one of the women from the human resource department. You come in here with somebody from the human resource department as your plus one. They're going to stare at your ass, Martin Luther. Lee. They're going to say, yo. <laughs> They're going to be like, bruh, is that the best you can do? Wow. Boy, she sure is nice. That's a nice woman. Let's continue with the super chats. And then I'll do the number one point and we can get out of here. DGC Soldier says, Coach, I'm 26 or 25 years old making six figures and am I on my grind, but I still want to poke the peace leave and find myself in red pill rage sometimes. Any advice? Okay, the point I was making, guys, when you get to a certain level financially, see, you're young and you made it to the six figures. You're extreme. You're a rarity. All right. But what you're doing is you're messing with women in your generation, right? So I'm sure you're dating women that are, um, you know, uh, you know, in your generation that, you know, I don't know, it might be still problematic for you. They might not realize how, how good that is, how good of a big deal. I know you can still poke on some peacefully, just not any low quality. Your, 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 my, your mantra at your age is this. Your, here's your mantra. Never mess with somebody that has less to lose than you. So if they're 25 and they work at Hooters, Okay, and you're 25 and make six figures. You got leg up on there. All right, so they don't have nothing to lose but to mess up your game. So you should be doing things with protection. If you a nasty boy, you a nasty boy. It is what it is. But at 25, six-figure income, you in you in prime, you in you in you're in a life that nobody you in a life that people dream about. Like, you're living a life that people dream about. You have things and access to things that people dream about, Hammond. They don't even, they see you and they don't even know how you did it. They're like, ah. that's where you are. You shouldn't be enraged with nobody. <laughs> All right. But it depends on what you look like, too. I don't know. Rent, lease, lease. Mexi Michael, coach, you recommend uh, set a budget per cent of the income per month for the junior college rotation. What age range Kaylee's worth the headache? Oh, gosh, boy, that's a whole nother subject matter. Yeah, man, you better. Everything's a budget. I'm very budget oriented. So like if I was dating, it would be budget. oriented. I'm doing uh, meeting women. I'm not paying for them. You know, there's tip money and all that. There's a tip jar. But yeah, 
I, I'm very budget oriented, so I know what I want to spend for anything. Put it like that. And uh, we talked about this on the stream. Uh, 24 to 27 is always a prime better age. You can get lower, but just know that a lot of them are they're distracted in life. You got to think, man, what you know. You know, I get 19 and 20 and 21 year old women that throw themselves at, not throw themselves, but they hit me up and they inquire. And a lot of dudes are offering them, they say, uh, uh, whatever they're doing. But I find that under 23 is starting to get. It's starting to get problematic in negotiations. They're still a little deluded. 24 to 27. 24 to 27, but you can go lower if you want. But if you go lower, I mean, it's still going to be like pulling teeth to negotiate and get them, to, get them to show up. You know what I'm saying? Get them to show up on time. Get them to commit to the. By the time you finagle the deal, it ain't going to be worth it. It's going to be too big of a headache. You're going to be like, whatever. You're going to get it and then say, it. I'm moving on. All right. Some people are like, how dare you out here with these young girls? <sighs> Guys, the generation of women that you grow up with are not your women. This is my thing. The generation of women that you grow up with, that you guys are constantly in this frustration, this back and forth, this pull and tug, this, 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 this. Those aren't your women. The reason why it doesn't work as good is because they're not your women. They, they don't see you as, they don't see you as a leader. They don't see you as a mentor. They don't see you as that guy. They see you as the homeboy. They see you as the buddy, the friend, the, the partner. That's what they see you as. They never see you as an authority. They never see you. And so it, it is always work where you had some sort of authority and they see they want that. They literally want that. They, they want that. If they can find that, they are actually in heaven because they don't have to think. You think for them. I mean... They don't have to think and they don't have to struggle and they don't have to build and go through the mud and figure out how to pay for the house and take out loans. And you're already there. You're already there. And then they can just come in, slide in and not think. All they can do is. So your gen your generation, I'm Generation X. Your women are millennials and Gen Z. Now, if you really want to go lower than that, you really, you know, I mean, at, over time, yeah, you can get there. You're really going to be like Uncle Earl. But if you're Gen Z, your women are right now in fifth grade. And you just got to wait till they're ready for you. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have way better dealings with them. You're going to have way, it's going to be way easier for you, for them. They got to experiment and get it right. Because they're going to figure out they don't like the power dynamic after a while, but it don't matter. You already got what you got out of them. Gen X, you're, if, as a male, Gen X, your, your women aren't Gen X. Millennials, those aren't your women. Your women are behind you. So you're working your way up to make it easier for them. Uh, Justin Gonzalez, this reminds as this reminds me, uh, coach, an XX dating coach on YouTube for men said that women will never approach you unless you are Chad or Tyrone or she's alpha. This is true too. And and she won't approach you unless she's like, yeah, you're the Chad or Tyrone. And I'm uh the one thing I have against me is height. Like I don't have that, but I was muscular, so and I was lean, I was a little bit more cut. And defined so that gives you a they're like okay he ain't tall but he's muscular and i ain't ugly ugly you know what i mean you know so that helps man it helps but what you always have to remember and remember this um chad and tyrone mostly are not getting thrown good looking women they're mostly getting thrown knock knee cock eye soggy titty a uh, buck tooth, snaggle tooth, cross eyed, pigeon toed. That's who's approaching Chad or Tyrone. Right? Let me see something here. Sorry. That's who's that's who's approaching Chad or Tyrone. Hot women ain't approaching Chad and Tyrone every day. Right, Mastodons are approaching Tyrone. Keishas and Takeshas are approaching Tyrone. 
hair weaving hair that's who's walking up on Ty Chad and Tyrone say hey now every now and then a, a woman will make it decent for the Chad and Tyrone uh, an attractive woman will make it decent but an attractive woman overwhelmingly will lean towards a man a provider in her early years not so but even though like they'll do the Chad and Tyrone thing but they're trying to sell themselves to the highest bidder an attractive woman a smart intelligent attractive woman a dumb one will do any dumb thing right biker gang gang banger pookie ray ray that's a dumb attractive woman that's basically what they would call a um they call them a uh, baddie those are baddies baddies are attractive but they're attractive for a different reason they're not genetically attractive they're they're hot girl you know what i mean they're hot and sex appeal they're not attractive like they can glam up to attract them. they can wear the right clothes and tie the shirt above the midriff and wear the right bamboo earrings at least two pair they can carry the fendi bag and a bad attitude that's all that needs to get you in a good mood she can walk with a switch or talk with street slang i love it when a woman ain't scared to do her thing standing on the bu bus pop stop sucking on the lollipop <laughs> those are baddies baddies are baddies are dumb they trade their value in for pookies and ray rays but a attractive woman an attractive woman she'll fool around a little bit but she'll sell to the highest bidder so they're not approaching chads and tyrones if they do it's in between two sugar daddies it's in between two dudes that was she was engaged with and now she's down bad and now she's gonna hop back on i'll mess with the chad and then i'll hop back on i have to break this down to a science to you guys because it's really straightforward it's straightforward if you really accept it this is why you have red pill rage because you haven't accepted this is the solution to Red Pill Rage. Accept. Don't fight it. Don't say how it should be. That's a female thing. That's a female tactic. Don't say how it should be. Attractive women should like me for me. Yeah, well, they should, but they don't. And it ain't never going to be that way. Right? So give it up. Accept. Accept how it is and play the game how it is. So um, let me do this. Because I'm going to give you the number one reason. I'm going to review it for the people who we might break it down. Reason number five, you got red pill rage. You haven't resolved your issues with your ex. You still have legal issues. Reason number four, you haven't indulged in hobbies and travel. Reason number three, you're in the blue pill arena. Everybody around you is blue pilled and you're getting this information and you're struggling. Number two, women still have a hold on you. All right. You can't get over it. You want B-job away, BJ away from a plantation. Reason number one, you believe in the unicorn. See, this is what I was just talking about. You don't get to the acceptance stage. See, the final solution, final solution, the final solution to all this, you reach full acceptance, acceptance of what you know. Now, what you know cannot be true. It might not be true, but you will say, I know this enough to be true. It's true enough. I'm going to roll with this. Forget it. I'm at the fork in the road in life. I'm going to go this way or that way. And many of you, when you get the RP content, you get to the fork in the road. What are you going to do? And what happens is people that believe that, yes, coach is in fact right, but there still might be a unicorn. That's where you get screwed. You're going to get stabbed in the back on this one. Because all it takes is for her to say the right things and you fall for it. See, she different. This one ain't going to do it. Or I got money, so I'm going to be able to control her and keep her in check. You start doing stupid stuff out here. I'm like, boy, you going to, okay, you find, okay. Now you can get one to get on your program, but you still don't go out there and marry her without a state's license. I mean, with a state's license, you still don't do that. But you find a unicorn and you flush the toilet. You go back out there you go, oh, well, see, I found the one after all, coach. So you believe you still can find the unicorn. In all of this, I arrived at the fork in the road. I have a unicorn in essence in my life. I told her, I still ain't never marrying you. I don't care how good you are. Oh, I'll be good to you. I'll be good. Okay, yep. Yeah. Just keep you around. And then when, you, when you're when you ready to be done with this, you're done. 
there's no pay there's, there's no pay she's young she's she's a generation she's a gen z older gen z all right she's been around me for three years and she's been kept that bay. that's where you're gonna stay right there if you want anything more than this you're gonna get the squat you're gonna lose it all and she's like that's good i'll, I'll stay right here i'll be good right here if she tries any tactic she knows it's immediately i'm cutting her and she cannot encroach all right so women will try to encroach on you because they'll be good to you for a certain amount of time and then they'll start encroaching all right maybe i'll try to spend an extra night maybe i'll spend a night maybe i'll do this and then you put nope step back this is where you're getting this is where you're getting it i'm not having a second wife i'm not getting second child support i'm not getting there's nothing there's nothing advancing from here she knows that and she's gonna go okay so he says are you pimp nope she's not this this girl was around before i even thought about seeking a ring and she's still so always tell guys you guys think that i'm telling you every person that i deal with is a seeking it's not those are the ones that i'd be like okay top shelf i'll go top shelf with her so that's why i can go on seeking and be very i can be very um particular of what i'm looking for i don't have to just take anybody i'm like nope you don't qualify you don't qualify you don't qualify you don't qualify because i already have this over here so i can keep it at bay i don't need a budget i'm like no nah, i'm not going crazy i'm not running wild like hulkamania So another reason why I can't go back to older women, I'm like, I got a girl that I've had here for since she was 22. She comes over, I see her once every two weeks, maybe like one day or two days every two weeks. And I keep her at bay. That's where you're gonna stay. She's been here since 22, now she's 25. And that's where I like it. That's where I like it. That's why I'm going to keep it. And at any point, she can bounce on me and I'll be good. I'll be like, and? <laughs> right? I'll be like, so? So those are the situations where I don't get invested in that. I don't care. So, But you guys are looking for that. You guys got would have got sucked in years ago. You guys got to get sucked in years ago. So at that point, you know, a lot of guys, again, somebody saying right here, coach, keeping or even in between her young bull boyfriends that I don't care about. She's not mine. See, this is what you guys got to get to. See, this is you guys want to own women. You literally want to own women. You think you, you this is where you guys are messed up. She ain't never yours, bruh. You'll never own her. You guys want to get out here, get a woman and then see who she banging and see who she's with and follow her Snapchat. I don't care. <laughs> I tell them that when you with me, that's all I care about. When you ain't with me, go do whatever the hell you want. I don't care. See, you guys care. This is why you guys are still in Red Pill Race. I don't care what she does. Who cares what she's doing on her time? She ain't on my time. Now, if she was on my time and she was on my support, and she was trying to be my wife, then I would care. I don't care. I ain't invested in her. She ain't my soulmate. Who gives a damn? So I always tell them, what you do on your own time is your own time. That means what I do on my own time is my own time. It's my thing. Don't check up on me. Don't ask me where I've been. Don't ask me why I ain't take you. Don't ask me why. That's how I live. Yeah, you guys care too much. I don't care what she doing in between when I see her or not. You care. And that's why that's why you getting ran over out here. That's why you keep that's why you keep running after these women and checking up on them. Who do that is a fruitless job. That is a tremendous waste of time to be worried about what a girl's doing when she's not in your presence. If I don't ask about her, she better not ask about me. Period. Don't ask about me. I won't ask about you. But y'all want to take these women and then think she going to be yours and protect them and keep them from the world and try to find out what you're doing and why you doing. Man, please. 
they're super duper replaceable. <laughs> they're replaceable. If she drops out, somebody else filling the spot. Come on. <laughs> she playing her role. Somebody said y'all don't want commitment. See, this is a level that y'all really can't get to. You got to be able to get to that level where you can have her say, well, she could come in there and go. He's just so he said, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, where you guys want to get to the level where she can come in here. Well, somebody else is going to propose to me and they giving me a better deal. I would tell her to go take it. Go take it. Go ahead. I don't owe you nothing. You don't owe me nothing. Bye. Yeah. How many men you've been with guys? It's 2022. Why would you care? You know the number high as hell. <laughs> but you want to know the quality of it, the type of salami, how good he was hitting it? You guys are worried about too much. You guys literally need to take off all of these things, and your life will be free. Your life is going to be free of all of this stuff. Who cares? Women... When you meet a woman, she's going to have people before you. Just deal with it. Deal with it. I'm not trying to marry the person. I'm not trying to take her home to meet my mama. Who cares, man? I ain't stressing. Stop stressing over these 304s. And this is why, man. I, there's no unicorns out here. I'm not meeting a virgin. I'm not trying to take her soul. I'm not trying to out pimp her. I'm not trying to outshine the next man. I'm not trying to do better than the next man did. I'm not trying to do it. All I want to do is worry about the moment that she's here. And when she's gone, I don't worry about her. Don't even think about her. Not to that extent. Not to that extent. I'm not going, man, I wonder what. Who cares what the hell they doing, man? They're going to do it anyway, whether I know it or not. Yeah, y'all worried about she likes me for me. Man, I know. I don't know why she likes me, but she does. I don't know why any person likes me, but they do. Now, I'm going to use that time to go, all right, you like me now? Because I know there's a point where you won't like me. Okay? And when we reach that point, it's going to be the end of it. You guys got to get to this part being cold out here, man. But you guys are worried about what they're doing on their off time. Guys, you really don't want to know. You really, really don't want to know. Okay, I'm just letting y'all go. If you really want an accounting of what they're doing on their off time, first of all, you're going to find out they're boring. Then you're going to find out they're broke, right, and try to do things. Then you're going to find out they're desperate. And then you're going to find out stuff you really don't want to know. Stop asking them. Stop caring what they do. Go do you. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go do me. I'm going to go do me. When I say I'm going to Santa Barbara this weekend, I never have to worry about some woman going, well, can I go? Because they know they can't go. <laughs> I would have said, let's go to Santa Barbara if you were invited. But I said, I'm going to like this weekend. I'm like, I'm going to San Diego. Drove down there, drove back. Not one person, and a couple people knew, not one person said, I want to go. Can you take me? Because they would have knew the answer. No, you ain't going, because I probably got some business down there that I'm taking care of. It's a new level, man. He says, facts, coach, ain't, going, ain't no going back to these blue pill days. There's no point in going back blue pill. And I know very nice women and all of that stuff. There's no point. What what point would it do for me? And I'm trying to school you guys. What point would it do for me to get engaged or married? Somebody tell me right now. I mean, maybe you're here watching me and you're disagreeing. What point would it be? What, what would be the point? I already have two kids. And, and they're about to be out of the house in T minus three years. Like they're going to be in college. So the light's at the end of the tunnel. I'm asking you, what would the point be? I've already got kids, already got financial situations straight. I could ride this out and do what I'm doing for another two, three, five. Who, who knows? 
I have the car I want. I had to live in the neighborhood that I want. What would it do for me to have somebody say, that's my committed partner? What? <laughs> True love and companionship. Oh, my goodness. Main, main, main. What did somebody says, what about herps? What you will find out. You guys want to know. You guys want to know a hardcore truth. Some of these regular women y'all banging got the herpes. I mean, it is not. What you're going to happen is you're going to catch herpes from a girl you don't think that had herpes. I hate to tell you that. And it's not going to be from a stress. It's not going to be from a girl that you meet on the seeking arrangements. It's going to be some girl that you met at a bookstore. And you're going to be like, oh, this is going to be an easy one. And she she going to let you and she going to give it to you. It's not going to be from somebody you met on a site. It's not going to it's going to be from some tender girl, some introvert nerd that you think ain't nobody plowing that. You're going to run up in a rock. She going to give you the herpes. Mm. Or some big overweight woman that you be like, ain't nobody smashing this. And she smashed every Chad, Pookie, Tyrone, and Ray Ray. And she going to give it to you, bro. <laughs> it, it's, 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 it goes without fail. Those are the people that you get it from. The ones you least expected that got it. Not the one that you're conscious about and overprotective and running uh, two radio Jimmy tires on your salami. You ain't going to get it from her. It's going to be from the regular one that you at least expect. Trust me. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, but protect yourselves. All right. Younger retired. No cap. Says uh, Stacy's and Kaylee's wait at the finish line and F the winners. Busted Pillsbury, Biscuit Can, Slow Tuesday, and Gordita's wait at the mid-race checkpoint. They got use. That's true. The, uh, you know, the, the trophy wife type women, they get the genetics. They capitalize on it. Most of them, they either get married or they become messed up, right? They party out. But most of them figure it out. And they wait at the top. Know that there's a hierarchy in our society. If somebody meets you midway and wants to ride up with you, she knows she can't get no rich guy. All right. It is what it is. And so then she wants to do power couple stuff while you're midway all fixed up. Hey, we can come in and be a power couple together. You know, you're like, I don't want a woman like that. I'm already kind of past that point of where not a lot of them can bring in enough for me for me to give this up. You know what I mean? Like, they, their income would have to be, I don't want to tell you what my income is, but their income would have to be pretty significant for me to give that up and, and give up the space to them. Like, they couldn't be in 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 91, 110, 120. It, it would still be insignificant. Not, not that I make that much more than them, but it's like, what would I have to give up to get that? Like, what would I be gaining for that? And where is she... Where's that 110 going? Where's that 100K going? Is it going where she's just going to bring it in and throw it on top of my money and then we parlaying? Or is she going to say, this is my money and I'm going to be off at my corporate job and then I'll come see you when I see you? Well, no, then you could be a concubine at that point. You could be a concubine. Why would I marry you? I don't have access to your money. I'm not getting the benefit of you. And then you're going to be overly masculine or some part of it. Like, what, do you, what am I getting? This is why rich men typically don't marry women that have that profile in which they're like, okay, I'll make as much money as you and we work. Otherwise, your kid's going to be raised um, with a nanny or they're going to be raised in a, uh, what do you call it? Where they send them away from school. Or they send them away from school. Uh, I can't remember what they call it. Boarding school. That's what your kid going to be raised in, where you guys are both making $500,000 a year. And, you know, she's a grinder at her job. You're a grinder at your job. And your kids are either raised by nannies or boarding school. Again, what is the benefit? 
like what would i get okay am i gonna get a second porsche like what am i gonna get bro like literally somebody tell me what would i get i mean it make it sound fascinating a bigger house that i have to work i mean what would i get i, I don't see it and she gonna be at work all day and working on what she wants to do and oh i gotta travel and do Okay, you literally gonna be a concubine I would see once every two weeks. I would not have to marry you. Because that's what I'm gonna get anyway. If I married you and moved you in, that's what I would see you. I would see you every two weeks. <laughs> once every two weeks. All right. Anyway, forget that. Then I gotta be, you know, no, no, no. Sigma, the prince. It's an insult when a big chick or unattractive chick steps, steps to me, and I know I'm better than that. Social engineering. Uh, yeah, man, I don't really, I don't really mind, but I really be like wanting to let them know, like, I know you think I'm a low grade ninja, but <laughs> you know what I mean? I'd be like, you really don't know. You know, I just be like, you really don't. I know you think I'm low grade. I know you think I'm a dusty. I know you think I ain't got my ish straight, but. Like, I, I'd call on you, sure, but you're going to have to be you deep on the bench. Deep. Do not ask me for nothing. Do, don't ask me to take your ass out. Don't. I'm just letting you know you ain't getting, you getting zero of that. And what they'll literally go, what they'll do is they'll be like, either this dude is arrogant or really confident. Most of them will go with he's arrogant. Why does he think he's arrogant? Who does he think he is, right? That type of thing. And I was doing him a favor. I'm like, you really don't know, ma'am. <laughs> You'd be lucky if I could get it up for you after two times. I, I'm just letting you know. It's That's where I am. But you think you're good because you're good in Charlotte, North Carolina, right? Oh, you don't know what I can do. I'm a, you think, man, I'm telling you, Mexi Michael, don't share RP knowledge with uh, blue, in blue pill environments. You'll get hate. Instead, hide your power level and move like a ninja. Be a sheepdog in sheep's clothing. Yeah, man, don't even try to go out here. Like, I'm going to just let you know. I'm a guy that has, does live streams on RP. I don't talk about it. Out in, When I go out into the grocery store, I'm not, hey, man, let me red pill you over here. I just watch and observe. And having you noticed most of my best stories have been me watching and observing. It's not out there going, man, I shared the red pill with somebody. I literally just be watching these people out here going, damn. Yeah. I'm sitting over there like, wow, look at this stuff. And then now I come here and share with you guys. But don't go out there all energized and talking about, let me tell you about hypergamy. Let me tell you about monkey branching. The, the, the beta world doesn't see this. They will never even admit that it's happening. And they'll have evidence right in front of them. And you'll be like, what that is? That's he, she monkey branched on you. What? There's terminology for this? Yes, it is. What she did was she held on to you. Or she kept her foot on first base and she stole second base. That's very common for them to do. That's actually in their nature. You know what I mean? Let's, you can just break that down. What? Nature? Nah, man. Just let them be like, you know what? It's common. That happens. Move on. Most simps will still go out there. I know dudes that got dragged two, three, four times in divorce. And they still out there. They still out there in the blue pill world trying to make it work. Wow. Uh, Effie Tobo. Oh, Effie Tobo. I can't pronounce that. He says, I came from a blue pill family and I never had experience. My dad is pressuring me to marry a gold digger. He selected for me. I refused and he called me gay. Are you Nigerian, brother? And so he's trying to arrange a situation for you. Uh, some people, man, misery loves company out here. It's crazy. Let me do the rest of these super chats. That's crazy, brother. Uh, but you sound like a young bro, all right? Um, and that happens. Uh, once, once you get a little bit more age, then you can avoid those things. Oh, yeah, Nigerian brother. Yeah. 
Soft Sand says, when I went to the massage parlor when I was 17, there was no going back straight up. Haven't seen Shorty the same. Shorty's the same. <laughs> Again, it, it, it's the same thing. A lot of guys be like, oh, man, I just can't get with that massage. Like, like I've never done a massage parlor like that. Not saying that I would never, but I like there's I, it just doesn't work for me. You know what I mean? But but once you go past a certain thing, you can't you'll never cross back into regular hopeless romantic women. You'll never do it. You you will literally go, wow, I can't come back. I can't go back. The hopeless romantic women will never do it for you. Because you realize how much of a trap they're setting on you. And then you're like, man, I would just get with her just to get a skeet off. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, but what game guys will do is manipulate that woman, lie to her. And then she end up keying your car, blasting you on social media, calling your name out, doing this and that. See, that's what you get messing with hopeless romantics. A hopeless romantic keeps receipts. She blasting your name out. She on she on other people's streams ratting you out. I don't mess with women like that. I don't do it. I mess with women that can be literally just walk away, walk off. <laughs> I tell her the truth, what it is. I don't have to finesse and lie to them. No. Nope. Reese Man Texas, thanks for not using the N-word. You're not a sellout, coach. Thank you, man. We don't do that around here. Younger uh young Vikey says, but coach, she thick. cheap dick around here i understand <laughs> somebody said disney romance yeah hopeless romantics to me are dangerous those are the most dangerous people out here in terms of dating and all that i stay clear away i don't want you to be hopeless romantic with me at all I, those are the worst i put them on a very low scale because they're leading with nothing but manipulation they will try every manipulative tactic they possibly can and they'll be the ones that when it breaks up, oh, they're going to make it hell for you. When they break up, those are the ones that take your ass to court. Those are the ones that, you know why? Somebody explained this. I used to call it an attachment issue. They thought it was love, but they had an attachment. Somebody explained it like this. The opposite of love, I can't remember, so I can't give credit. The opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is indifference. I can't remember. I just heard somebody talking about this. It might not have been a red pill guy. The opposite of love is indifferent. So if I love you and don't love you anymore, I will just be indifferent to you, right? But most people go from love to hate. See, what that is, is an attachment. That's an attachment to you. That's control. That's manipulation. Those people don't love you. They have control of you. They have their hooks in you. They're a parasite in essence. They're parasitic. And then once you uh, remove yourself from them, like a parasite, they start dying and floundering. So they got to keep attached to your ass. Who was talking about this? Somebody said, Rolo said that. I, I heard it from somebody else. It was off the red pill. But people have talked about it. Give credit to whoever said it. Give credit to whoever said it. I didn't think about it. Um, Anthony Spade might have been the one talking about this recently. So I will give credit to Anthony Spade. I think because I, I did listen to him recently. So that's where I would give the credit to. But I think that's true. I always said love turns to uh, when the love is gone, then the person stays attached to you. Watch it. Watch it. And then they'll end up saying, well, I, I I wasn't in love with you for X amount of years, X amount of months, X amount of days. I fell out of love with you, but they're still there. They're still there. They don't leave you. And then it takes a while for them to do you the pro And then they'll be like, well, I didn't love you anyway. Right? That's attachment, bro. That ain't love. And hopeless romantics are attached to you. They attach themselves to you like a parasite. <laughs> Anyone that wants you to lead, uh, lead with that type of thing, right, is manipulating you. Oftentimes, there's levels of manipulation in there that they don't even realize they're doing. 
And then you're looking at him going, wow. And what, what the biggest manipulation of it all, it was Anthony Space, so I'll give him credit. The biggest manipulation of it all, and I'll finish the Super Chat, is that person will oftentimes see be, that person will be so flawed as a human being that the only thing they have is love to offer. They'll never be like a complete person. They'll never be rich. They'll never be, they'll be broken. They'll be physically outside broken. Their, their physical being will not be the best. They'll like be five foot two and be wide as they are tall. Or they won't be, they won't be genetically strong in the pretty category. But they'll be glammed up, makeup, nails, and hair be done. All kind of perfume and smelling like lotion. You know what I mean? They'll be overwhelmingly flawed as a human being. Broke, not very headed anywhere, anywhere in life. But they know love. They know how to love. I know how to love. There'll be 18 relate love relationships in. Love the same man the same way, and it didn't work out. And when it doesn't work out, guess what happens? They come attack you. They attack you. You're always the guy who messed it up. The guys always mess it up on the hopeless romantic. He wasn't doing this and he messed it up. It's always the guy's fault. Never their fault. I stay away from hopeless romantics like crazy. They can do nothing for me. I'm out. I don't want nothing to do with them. <laughs> All right. L Laren Devereaux. Loran Devereaux. Devereaux. CGA, he says, ask cash or gas. Nobody rides for free. Paying my tithes to the Reverend Dr. Adams in the Coach Gang congregation, staying on my grind and bringing the gospel to the masses. Can I get a? And that's I'll you. give you two. And that's and I give you two. I got money. <laughs> All right, Michael Frantitoro, he says her breath is gonna be stinking and her feet is gonna be stinking. That's right. All right, right here. And I, guys, if there's hopeless romantic men and women out here, I'm not dissing you, but I'm saying for me in the selection process of people that I associate with, I often find the hopeless romantics to be the most draining of all of them. They're the most time consuming, draining, delusional. Uh, and they put standards on you just because, just because love, just because it's what's done. You need to do this. Like, why? For you, why? Well, this is what's done. Like, you're like, mm. 